Come, please. Thank you, Dr. Abraham. सर आपकी आवाज नहीं आ रही डॉक्टर अशोक आप सबको नमस्कार थैंक यू डॉक्टर अक्रम खान ऑनरेबल चीफ गेस्ट ऑफ टुडे इवेंट मिस अमनीत पी कुमार आईएएस डायरेक्टर जनरल एमएसएमई हरियाणा दो शी इज नॉट एबल टू जॉइन एंड इट इज अ ग्रेट प्लेजर ऑफ वेलकमिंग हर ऑन हर ऑप्शंस दे रिप्रेजेंटेटिव आर हियर फ्रॉम द हरियाणा एमएसएमई क्लस्टर uh distinguish our uh, uh, guest and uh, keynote speaker mr mukesh kulati executive director of uh, the msme cluster new delhi the esteemed our special guest and invitee uh, dr anjan ray the director central building research institute as well as the director of iib dehradun and esteemed our guest and the co chairman of the panel discussion dr amit chatterjee the director r&d center vedanta limited esteemed our director dr avinash kumar sirvastava advanced material and process research institute distinguished dr anandavalli the director structural engineering research center chennai and the team director of civil infrastructure engineering actually that is madam anandavalli is just occupied with our former uh, director general csir at this moment they are having some meeting she will be joining subsequently later and we have many participant and uh, panelist mr vp singh from uh, yamuna nagar uh, msme sector dr uttam bhavaskar from tata power industry Mr. R K Solangi from G M Power, New Delhi. Uh, Mrs. Vaishali Savarkar from Hindalco Industry Limited. Dr. Tibak Pansal from uh, Hatco Housing and Urban Development Department. Dr. Jagan from Regional Director, Central Pollution Control Board. Dr. Rugi Hak, so S D O from Madhya Pradesh Forest Department. Dr. Amit Rai. the vice president of business development jp power burgaon and uh, shri sanjay sharma as well as shri amit goel from yamuna nagar plywood industry cluster dr arvind tubre a entrepreneur as well as a special news correspondent mumbai and mohammad dasim rawat a architect in addition to that we have many csir scientists dr banu verma dr ashok kumar my colleagues from ambri pawal dr sariya verma dr akram gaun dr shukla dr manish mutkal there are many other scientists from other csir lab dr prabhagar dr sinha from central road research institute dr rohit meshram dr lakshmi kandan dr ambley dr kirti soni dr sandha kumar dr gupta manoj gupta dr sumita kobinath dr rajmi singhal and dr mustaqim and we have many directors and senior officials from msme the major industries entrepreneurs and the startup industry they are participating and the professional from civil infrastructure engineering the architect the designer the construction agency and builders uh, they are uh, with us today and we have many children uh, school children and students from the school colleges 
university and uh, academic institution are also there with us. On behalf of uh, Advanced Material and Process Research Institute, the director, Dr. Avinish Kumar Srivastava, I, Dr. Ashokan Papo, the chief scientist, as well as the coordinator of the event, have a great pleasure in very warmly welcoming you all for this very important event of Sabko Namaskar, Namaskar, Namaskar. Actually, this uh, industry meet, waste to wealth, uh, on civil infrastructure engineering, we had a five days program. So in this five days event, and we had a four different uh, session. So they have been, uh, each session we were having it. So one plenary speech, one keynote address, as well as four technology presentation. The plenary speech and keynote address is from the industry side. And the four technology, whatever it is from the CSIR side. So in the view of the national agenda on Atma Nirbar Bharat and Azadi Amrit Mosav, in celebrating our 75 years of independence, we started networking and working out to create an integration between the industry and the stakeholders and the entrepreneur and the policy makers, how the ripened technology of CSIR can create an opportunity for the entrepreneurship and the startup industry in contributing to enhance the economy of the country and create the employment and improve the livelihood of the people of the rural and urban and thus contribute in safeguarding our sustainable balanced environment. So in this, we have today the panel discussion, the chairman, Dr. Anjan Drey, we are very much thankful to you, sir, for creating your very, very important time in being with us in going to organize this uh, panel discussion. And we are very grateful to Dr. Amit Chatterjee, the vice uh, coach, the co-chairman and the director of uh, Vedanta Group. And we have a very special thanks to Dr. Mukesh Kulati, the executive director for joining with us today and delivering the keynote address. And we have in this uh, uh, meeting many participants and delegates and panelists from all sectors. And in the previous event on ice and 40 that was conducted on 5th of July on the theme, high performance civil infrastructure material and structure from industrial inorganic waste. On uh, 11th of July, under the iConnect 44, the theme high volume use of industrial waste for civil infrastructure material, we have organized this. On 7th July, on the theme alternative building material and structure using silica rich waste that was organized. On 14th of July, primarily under the iConnect 46, the agro waste recycling technology and inorganic industrial waste recycling technology that was addressed, deliberated and discussed. And today, as a summary, on four technologies, whatever, on four theme of the technology, about 18 technology from CSIR was presented. And each session, the plenary and the keynote speech by the special invitee from the industry, they have uh, delivered their uh, speech and shared their knowledge on the practical uh, application perspective. So today, just I would like to highlight, maybe take five minutes, to give you a flavor of on each uh, days, what is the topic we have discussed. Since uh, there are many participant entrepreneurs, they are uh, watching us, they are participating in this event. I request all the entrepreneurs, all the uh, startup industry, sometimes you might not have participated on the, the previous session of uh, the iConnect meeting. So for those of who are not uh, participated, you can have a note on, I am going to only give you the topic of the technology, where the first technology was a RedMed based gamma radiation uh, shielding aggregate as well as heavy density concrete. This is having a technology readiness level of six. Dr. Manish Mutkal from Ampri Popal, who was a, 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 a PA of this uh, technology, whoever industry you wanted, the radiation shielding concrete, you are seeing the radiation shielding aggregate you are seeing, it has great importance in the healthcare system and then the nuclear power plant. So you can contact him or you can contact us that we will connect to take this technology to the next level. 
the second one is the jerofix uh, particularly the jerosite which is coming from the zinc industries the zinc lead industries so how to utilize that was considered as a partially hazardous waste how to immobilize how to detoxify how to use in a high volume for road infrastructure that was presented by dr sinna from central road research institute in a practical application it was demonstrated whoever industry is in interested even central public work department or the pwd or the the local agencies they can contact uh, dr sinna to take away to this technology to realize in a commercial scale the third one on the first session we have done on pre-engineered pre-cost lightweight large wall and roofing panel for mass housing and dr prabhagar from structural engineering research center chennai he has presented he demonstrated in a full scale where the panel was made pre-prepared pre panel and demonstrated the complete structure and then the the life and the durability of the structure was also done by accelerated uh, force of demolition and then they confirmed their suitability and the applications so whoever interested to set up in a startup industry you can you can uh, approach dr prabhagar primarily what i wanted to say is the last five years more than 200 industries they might have approached us they have visited us they interacted with us finally when they started to uh, commercialization stage when they satisfied the technology they used to discuss about the technology license fee or technology investment for setting up the industry where the investment is more than 5 crore 10 crore if when we say like this then they have little apprehension dr ashokan we have 1 crore rupees or 50 lakh rupees can you give some any csr technology where we will be able to license and commercialize it so this was a triggered us a lot so why we should only worry about csr ampli technology there are many industries from tata vedanta adunik and industrial power they are there so you may be listening as uh, carefully sir i think so now we aim for in organizing this industry meet so that we can connect to the respective scientists and technology from the csr system to the respective entrepreneur or startup so that they can approach there and they can take away in a in a technology where they need to invest very less involvement of expenditure that is one of the reason why this i connect we have started with this much with a complete uh, full energetic mode and then the another technology was uh, presented uh, which is having trl7 how to utilize marble waste granite waste stone waste in converting into a, a artificial marble artificial granite or even the artificial timber product where the product is high performance and has many potential applications so you can approach csr ampri itself for this technology then we have the uh, another technology the phosphosips some fertilizer industry you may be knowing the gypsum waste even the thermal power plant they are also having the fluidized bed ash gypsum waste how to use it so central road research institute dr ak sinna and their team they have done in a commercial scale on use of this waste for making of road so you can approach crra on this technology the next technology is on quick rep repairing of the road or any concrete structure so through geopolymerization process so in the nml jamshedpur Dr. S.K. Paul, the planning head, you can contact them for having up such type of, uh, the, the, it will be like a magic binder uh, for repairing of uh, the, the road structure or in damaged places. The another technology that is called a pre-cost uh, ferro-cement toilet. So even for pre-fabricated toilet or pre-fabricated instant houses for the tsunami or any disaster prone area the structure has to be made in a large scale this can be used it and this is another technology which is available in structural engineering research center chennai the the another one is the eco friendly technology geopolymerization process so in the eco friendly technology that was done on geopolymerization process for making a paper block or tiles or hollow block or solid block that is having a trl7 and above they can contact structure Ampli the, the, from the Structural Engineering Research Center. So the another technology is uh, the copper slack, how to use for road construction. 
the copper industry they are using a lot of uh, the copper waste how to utilize it how to uh, convert into a valuable material in a mass scale that central road research institute they have uh, done the extensive work that can be uh, availed this facility from crr over here and the another technology eco friendly radiation shielding panel and door this technology was conducted so uh, this technology was developed by csa rambri popal and uh, this has a very great potential for uh, application in the healthcare system and uh, as well as uh, the nuclear plant so i think the vedanta group and adunik power plant and industrial power they already showed a lot of interest you can contact separately then this is having a very good excellent commercial potential and opportunity and we have the cost effective water tank for domestic need and this is also a, a technology which is a cost effective and uh, eco friendly and green material based so cbri it is a structural engineering research center chennai they have developed it dr prabhakar and their team they can contact and uh, another technology uh, that is construction of the uh, low cost uh, prefabricated panel and uh, tiles this was also done by uh, central building research institute particularly for construction and demolition waste how to convert into a panel or a um, block or for uh, bricks or tiles this is another potential area where huge quantity of the waste can be utilized then almost we are coming to the end now and yesterday we had a uh, presentation related with the agro waste technology all of you may be knowing that in, in the northern part the parali is a problem paddy straw paddy stubble how to convert the paddy straw and paddy stubble india particle board hybrid particle board this technology was developed where the trl is seven and this commercial scale it is done and is also transferred to one industry in bilai and it has a very futuristic and a very significant important in respect to the global warming greenhouse gas emission when we talk about those perspective on the circular economy and they can contact the csr ampri popal then the another technology is a power block from copper tailing the copper industry copper tailing waste huge quantity is coming out actually just wanted to convey india we produce almost 1 billion tons of solid waste out of the 1 billion tons of solid waste about 500 million tons they are organic in nature remaining 50% almost 500 is in organic nature the, the nature has balanced the organic and inorganic in such a way that's very very interesting now in terms of the each waste like clay ash from thermal power plant red mud from aluminum industry marble granite stone industry from the the rajasthan sector or the the agro waste from the agro industry or other type of waste metallurgical industry mining industry waste and then agro waste and then there is hazardous waste plastic waste e waste many things are there I, i don't want to take much time now we have a complete history of each waste how much is generated in the country as well as the world is producing 1 20 billion tons of solid waste our earth apart from the united states and the russia and china we are reaching out almost the fourth place where we are generating 1 billion tons of solid waste now this copper tailing is another areas dr akram khan and their team they have developed at csar ampri popal this is another major area uh, it has the opportunity for entrepreneurship and startup industry the textile reinforced concrete structural engineering research center chennai they have developed it they can contact scrg chennai and then finally the, from enamal jamshedpur they have also made the steel slag and fly ash combination how to make a granulated cement which has potential to replace the traditional cement that is another technology from enamal jamshedpur they can contact this is the last one and where the bricks geopolymer based bricks which was developed by dr mustaqim and their team at imd bhuneshwar and they have already licensed this technology to many industry actually we are targeting at least 150 industry each state each district this technology has to transfer and now 
they whoever entrepreneur they wanted they can contact dr mustaqim and the dr uh, basu sahab from iim to bhuneshwar for licensing and commercialization of the technology so with this uh, i would like to sincerely uh, thank all the participant all the entrepreneur all the uh, msme cluster directors and then uh, expert from different areas your intervention your involvement is really essential when we talk about the azadi ki amrit mahotsav whatever technology we developed today to realize and have benefit for our own in the interest of the overall growth of the country so everybody intervention is needed and i would appreciate that today we have the panel discussion we have many panelists i am afraid that we have one hour limitation time maybe when we request the each panelist to, to speak their perspective so we practically expect that you will address only your requirement from your jurisdiction based on the expertise available from the uh, csir system so that how we can collaborate with you, you and then we can have a, a upscaling of the technology i showed trl 7 8 whatever uh, 6 trl how to they are still in a semi pilot scale suppose we want to have automation we want to have commercialization in automated way we huge money involved how the major industries maybe the tata power the vedanta group many big industries are there how you will intervene in this with the government with the csr system to take away to the next level to have a optimum benefit of this technology that's what we are looking from the panel discussion so with this i once again thank you all and many entrepreneur and uh, startup industries are there we have lot of opportunity to create a new business to convert your ash into a cash is a great opportunity and a wonderful platform so we look forward for your critical comment as well as your intervention in integrating and have being a bond to uh, take away and uh, to move upon to realize this benefit of this technology in achieving the goal of uh, government of india on make in india clean india skill india and advanced manufacturing technology and finally atmanirbhar bharat and then reach out to azadi ki amrit mahotsav with this once again i thank you all namaskar so uh, thank you so much dr ashokan sir uh, for your welcome address and also for a very comprehensive uh, Uh, summary presentation that you have uh, talked about uh, covering all uh, the days uh, from day 1 to day 5 uh, about the different technologies which are ready at different trls and which are uh, ready for the commercialization which are ready for any which are ready for any entrepreneur to take them further Uh, you have talked about large number of uh, technologies which are available in the basket of csir be it uh, csir ampri csir immt nml and uh, serc and lot of other csir labs who scientists uh, and uh, representatives have made the presentations so i thank you for uh, giving a summarized presentation over the presentations and the deliberations that have taken place uh, in these five sessions uh, for this waste to wealth uh, cie uh, theme So now moving ahead, may I now request and invite Dr. Avnish Kumar Shivastav Sir, Director CSR Empire Bhopal, uh, for his introductory address. Dr. Avnish Kumar Shivastav Sir. Thank you, Dr. Akram, Dr. Ashokan, uh, CSR Advanced Materials and Process Research Institute, in short, we call CSR Empire Bhopal, is organizing this mega series. of iconic 75 in uh, 75 industry connect i connect which say in short events on waste to wealth under the civil infrastructure and gii scheme to showcase the achievements in various smt areas and uh, this is going on since uh, 5th july and dr ashokan papu has nicely Deep about different technologies. Uh, this event is a fitting tribute to the pride and prestige of celebrating 75 years of Indian independence. We are celebrating as Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav. 
the objective of csr mp organized event on west to well under the cie theme that is civil infrastructure engineering theme is to foster a strong atmanirbhar bharat by providing indigenous technologies on ways to well by forging a partnership with industry and to provide a common platform to industries entrepreneurs stakeholders government leaders startups academic scholars to maximize the benefit of solid waste recycling technology especially the technologies having the technology readiness level trl more than 6 in this connection today is the fourth and most important session in this series especially today we have plenary talk and keynote address and panel discussions and concluding session on waste to wealth under the ci theme uh, the dr n ananda valli director csr structural engineering research center that is crc chennai and chairperson of cie team um, will give the opening remark plenary talk uh, supposed to be given by our special guest shrimati amni p kumar is director general msme haryana in the area of resource efficiency and circular economy and ways to help but uh, due to some reasons which we all heard uh, she is not able to join the keynote speaker is shri mukesh gulati ed foundation for msme cluster uh, new delhi and he will discuss an area of cross sector sector waste recycling in today's panel discussion as dr shokan said say so, uh, several panelists including dr amit chatterjee from um, director uh, r&d vedanta shri vp singh walia joint director district msme center haryana dr uttam paskar head civil tata power mumbai shri r k solanki gm db power chatisgarh mrs vaishali p swarkar chief sustainable officer Indalco Industries Limited Mumbai Dr Deepak Bansal Joint GM Co Delhi Dr P Jagan Regional Director CPCB Bhopal Dr Ruhi Haq SDO Forest Department Madhya Pradesh Dr Amit Rai Vice President Business Development JV Power Gurgaon Shri Sanjay Sharma GM Tech Pavilion Gujarat Shri Amit Goyal Director GMG Plywoods private limited haryana shri arvind dubey special correspondent abc news network mohammad tazim rawat architect synthesis design studio and various scientists from our csr labs have joined to make this event successful by exploring the real need of the industries and providing the technological solution in the area of industrial organic inorganic waste like red mud fly ash marble stone and granite waste copper tailing fgd gypsum waste agro waste you mentioned about parali and all which we started uh, very recently about 3 to 4 years before and then municipal waste frp waste uh, ship breaking waste and plastic waste so i am also thankful to see uh, our on dr anjan re director csr indian institute of petroleum dehradun and director csr central building research institute roorkee uh, who has joined this session and the session is going to be a significant pathway for transforming csr technologies and creating a new platform for connecting industries entrepreneurs startups for a collaborative program and long term association for mutual benefits so thank you with this brief note and all the best wishes for this last and concluding session of i connect under ci team pertaining to waste to wealth and uh, we are all looking forward to have a very 
uh, strong bonding, collaboration, gelling, whatever you want to call, between the R&D institutions of the country and uh, with the industries of this country to solve the various problems which are directly or indirectly happening due to this waste, converting into the wealth that is the motto of this uh, whole program and which should also be useful to a common mind. Thank you very much. Namaskar. Uh, thank you so much, sir, uh, for your uh, introductory address and also for uh, throwing light on the importance and relevance of this uh, subject on which we are having this uh, iConnect, the Industry Connect, where it is really very important how to transform these technologies that are ready with CSIR at different labs uh, to the benefit of the common man uh, through a large sector of entrepreneurs, through large number of industries, industry representatives who can take these technologies uh, forward for the application and use of the common man. Uh, now, uh, I would like to uh, move ahead. Uh, we would like to invite uh, Dr. N. Anandavalli, Madam, uh, Director, CSR, SERC. But uh, as I am being told that probably Madam is occupied with some uh, uh, commitment, some meeting is going on. She is not able to join us for the opening remark. And uh, as has already been uh, communicated, I would just like to uh, inform again that uh, uh, the father-in-law of uh, our Honorable Chief Guest today, uh, uh, Mrs. Amnit uh, Kumar, Madam, father-in-law has passed away. So we take this uh, platform to express our deep condolences also to Madam and to her entire family. Uh, may the departed soul rest in peace. Uh, we would now like to move ahead in this program. I would now like to invite uh, Shri Mukesh Gulati, Executive Director, Foundation for MSME Cluster, uh, New Delhi, for his keynote address, which would be on cross-sector waste recycling. But before I do that, I have the privilege of reading his brief CV before this August gathering. Shri Mukesh Gulati is an internationally acknowledged MSME development expert with focus on clusters, value chains, and business development services. An engineer and MBA from IIM Lucknow, he has set up Foundation for MSME Clusters, in acronym FMC, as a not-for-profit institution in 2005 to undertake a wide range of MSME development initiatives in India. He headed FMC for 10 years from 2017 to 2000, uh, 2007 to 2017, and again took over the position at the head of FMC from February 2022 onwards. In between 2017 and 2022, he worked as a freelancer and supported FMC in the capacity of being the senior advisor. He had, on behalf of United Nations Industrial Development Organization, that is UNIDO, in 1996 initiated and successfully steered policy adoption of MSME cluster development as a key approach in India over more than a decade, that is from 1996 to 2008. He continues to train policymakers and development practitioners in several developing countries. During his 30 years career, he has authored several publications also. So with these few words of introduction about our honorable uh, keynote speaker, I now would invite Shri Mukesh Gulati for his address. Thank you very much. Make sure that I'm not using double mic. Um, there is still eco, right? Am I audible? 
somebody can help yes sir you are that. audible yeah. you are audible sir okay okay wonderful um so thank you very much for your invite is my screen also uh, visible to you sir a screen is visible but i request you to put it in slide mode sir i will do that it's done now yeah now it's fine sir it's done we can see thank it. you very much so um thank you for very much for inviting me for this particular uh, initiative and i heard from dr ashokan pappu that i have been in touch with him for many years that a large uh, variety of um, what you call technologies uh, for the waste recycling have been um, made by various csir labs and we are fortunate to have um, worked on at least one of these technologies uh, which partially may have been done by csir lab but also by other institutions which have done this work in this and it would be good if i can possibly share some of my experiences which might be very valuable when we are trying to transfer similar kind of technologies to other ways also um it was um um almost some 10 years ago that we, when we started with what is called foundry slag um but when uh, before i do that uh, it would be useful if i can briefly tell you about our organization which was set up in the year 2005 it is a uh, not for profit organization a consulting organization which works in the area of msme development or micro small medium enterprise development so we work almost everywhere in the country um in in more than 25 states we have already worked and we have also shared our learnings and experiences in more than 20 countries also abroad um where policy making training and capacity building monitoring evaluation about how enterprises should be supported in clusters and value chains has been our forte we basically learned most of these things from united nation industrial development organization which had initiated cluster development in india in 1996 when where i also happened to be a part of their team to uh, lead the process now um, that's our footprint we are working with uh, you know a lot of international organizations and also with the various national institutions Uh, including the uh, the corporate sector also in order to take this forward and also with many of the development organizations like sidb nabard and so on and so forth now um waste recycling is very much um considered to be a very critical area as far as the national policy is concerned so national resource efficiency policy in 2019 um which uh, emphasized the need for the reusing the secondary materials is very well known and i need not tell that to the august AD, uh, audience but the real problem is how do we take it forward to make sure that hundreds and thousands of enterprises can possibly take it up um as a part of their inherent dna so it was with the support from uh, dr ashokan pappu that we tried to look at the total volume of waste which is being generated in the country um it came to about 1.77 billion metric tons as we can see here on the chart the the construction and demolition waste happens to be the biggest 42% industrial waste is about 25% agriculture waste is 30% and municipal waste is only 3% but our focus has so far been only limited to the industrial waste um and it is quite well known that if the waste is already considered very valuable then it already finds a market and there are already um, players in the market which are who are willing to buy this and reuse it for further purpose that is why you do not find anything wasteful the moment it is of a high value the problem is essentially is with the high with the medium and the low value waste for which either there is no market today or the cost of treatment of the waste or storage of the waste or its safe disposal is so high that most of the enterprises do not want to enter into this domain and therefore a lot of such waste is actually dumped on the road side or thrown into the water bodies or it is sub optimally burnt now in a business as usual scenario um 
the total waste which is being generated in India will probably require um, the land size equivalent to Delhi state only to dispose of the waste. And uh, since we have been generating a lot of uh, what you call primary material from the mines for so many years and so much new material or primary material has already been generated that it is very worthwhile to think about the possibility when no more new primary material will actually be extracted from the mines. But all the material which we need for tomorrow's need or today's need is actually secondary material. Secondary material means the waste material which we can then reuse it for um, our purposes. Now, the MSME sector, uh, as we all know, uh, contributes to almost 45% of the manufacturing output. And it also uses almost 50 to 60% of the total energy consumption also. But a lot of technologies which we find which are available um, with different uh, institutions are taken. Sir, we are not able to hear your voice, sir. Are you there? Uh, sir, are you able to hear my voice? Can you can you hear me? Because we are not able to hear your uh, voice, sir. Your slide is visible, but we are not able to hear you. Gulati, sir, can you uh, can you respond? Are you there, sir? Is that better? Now can you hear me? Yeah, now we are Yeah, now we can hear you, sir. Thank you. Okay. I don't know why this, <clears throat> this happened. So, there are a very large number of what you call small and medium enterprises or micro small enterprises where there are already uh, enterprises which have started using waste. And I have given you a uh, list sir, can here. I, uh, sorry, sir, sir, sorry to intervene you. Uh, can I request you to put it on the slide mode, sir, your slides? Yes, I will do that again. Is that better? Okay, uh, fine. Uh, now it's fine, so sir. There, we can see it. Uh, thank you so much. Right. So there are many um, sectors or product categories in which small and medium enterprises already have set up waste recycling enterprises. And I will start with foundry, then, you know, uh, power plants, of course, they are fly ash based bricks, leather cut pieces, textile cut pieces, wood and ag other agricultural waste from which briquettes can be made. From heat treatment plants, electrolytes can be recovered. Coir is another sector where pith is being used for bio manure, bio manure blocks. Cashew nut is being used for making CNS oil. Erica nut is being used for bio manure. Biodiesel is being made from oil mills. So on these, all these areas, there are small and medium enterprises. But I want to highlight one particular sector where we have had experience in this. And that is the foundry slag, which is coke-based foundry, from which you can see that the slag, which is approximately 10% of the total production of the foundry molten metal is coming out. 
So in India, about one crore ton of uh, iron slag, iron ore, uh, no, not iron ore, iron molten iron uh, material is actually being melted, and of which ten lakh uh, tons of slag is being generated. And this ten lakh ton slag is actually being thrown on the way on the roadside, or it is being dumped. So one of the things that can be made out of it is the paver blocks. And in India, the total number of enterprises that you need in order to take care of the entire slag, which is coming out of the entire country, is only three hundred enterprises. And almost some ten years ago, there were only three or four enterprises which were actually. Uh, making this this uh, paper block, so the Department of Science and Technology helped us in scaling up this entire work to ensure that at least fifty such enterprises were created more, other than the three or four which were already existing, to make sure that the paper block making through foundry slag catches on. And it is very interesting that the uh, quality parameters are not only as good but even stronger than the natural aggregates when you use compared to this this particular uh, foundry slag. And secondly, it is ten to fifteen percent cheaper also. Now that means that a lot of enterprises should have actually come forward immediately to start doing this kind of a job. But this did not happen. A lot of support hand holding had to be given. By us and development alternatives, which were the technology pioneers in this area, in order to take it forward, this is where I want to sort of bring your attention. The process is very simple; it doesn't take much. You just need crushed slag, and then you need a, a, a mixer, and then you put in some coarse sand and the cement, and you then prepare this kind of a um, uh, we call paver block. But the challenges that we have seen is. that it is not just the technology which is critical beyond the technology what is also seen is that um, the local investors who might be interested in it first of all are not aware and i am sure that this kind of a struggle csir labs are also facing because they are reaching out to a large number of enterprises to showcase the technologies but even if the technology is known to them the consultants the machinery suppliers and the financiers from the banks they also find it very difficult to provide this kind of a support because they have not heard about these things and when the business succeeds over a period of time the same waste which was earlier being thrown and therefore available at a zero cost starts then becoming available at certain cost and that cost at some certain stage of time does not make it very viable for these enterprises to carry on now what was also seen is that in many places the government uh, when it buys particularly the municipalities they come up with certain kind of specifications which say that it has to be from the virgin material and so even if the quality is better than the uh, virgin material based thing even then many of the municipalities who are not aware would not necessarily buy this so that becomes yet another challenge now while the policy intent is there the regulatory and promotional uh, synchronization if it does not happen then it creates a lot of problem with many of these enterprises so what is very critical is that when when uh, institutions like ours work we need to have uh, a good connection with the state pollution control board national pollution control board uh, promotional bodies of the government consumer education uh, machinery and tool suppliers upgradation training and awareness of the consultants industry association linkages and unless we work with all these different types of stakeholders it really doesn't take off and the kind of outputs or outcomes that then we are looking at is how many such green msmes have been created how many such msmes have been upgraded to start using the secondary material how many msmes will then be able to do this waste recycling establishment how much green employment is created how much of investment is is uh, ensured by such entrepreneurs the msmes then also need to be sensitized in terms of green production processes and how much therefore carbon emission does it uh, reduce at the national level if these are the kind of measures then when we are looking at then only the enterprises are willing to take over and that establishes the need for having what are called clusters and value chains 
where large enterprises, which are also generating a lot of waste, if they can then join hands with organizations like, uh, like us or many other organizations, then all the downstream small enterprises can essentially pick up that waste at a large scale and have such enterprises being created in order to recycle that waste, which enables all the good things that essentially the government of India is wanting to do and take it forward. With that, I will thank you uh, for giving your attention and close my address here. Thank you very much. So let me let me thank you, uh, Shri Mukesh Gulati ji, for a very informative uh, keynote address, which is about uh, cross-sector waste uh, recycling and with a special focus on how to promote waste recycling in MSME sector, sir. So uh, on behalf of the organizers, I am really thankful to you because this presentation seems to be looking very close to the heart of all the scientists because ultimately whatever technologies we are ready with, uh, we need to bridge that gap and uh, take it forward um, through, uh, you know, individuals and uh, organizations like yours, where this can be brought to the use of the common man. And uh, you have very rightly talked about uh, uh, many issues on this, uh, how we can promote waste recycling in uh, different MSME sectors, what is the current waste scenario, what are the different application potentials with reference to in a good example that you have given, how Foundries like recycling uh, has been reused uh, for developing those paper blocks. And I'm sure, sir, that uh, with this kind of a presentation with many of us connected, a uh, lot of CSI technologies can make a breakthrough uh, with the intervention from entrepreneurs and uh, industries representatives like uh, your sir. So once again, from the core of the heart, thank you so much for delivering a very important keynote address on this occasion today, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll now move ahead in this program and uh, as is well known and has been uh, communicated by uh, uh, my previous speaker, Dr. Ashokan sir, that we are going to have a panel discussion uh, during this uh, program today. And the topic of the panel discussion is ways to wealth in uh, CIE, SNT and industry intervention to achieve Atma Nirbhar Bharat. Uh, uh, I would request uh, Shri Mukesh Gulati ji to kindly unshare uh, the slides, please. Kindly unshare your slides, sir. Uh, Gulati sir, am I audible? Yes, sir. I'm trying to do that. Okay. So we, we'll, we'll hold on for a minute, sir. No issues. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you so much. Now it's done, sir. Thank you so much, sir. So now uh, we'll go ahead with the panel discussion. And as I was mentioning that the uh, topic for the panel discussion is Waste to Wealth in CIE, SNT and Industry Intervention to Achieve Atma Nirbhar Bharat. Uh, the session would be chaired by Dr. Anjan Ray who is director of CSIR IIP and also uh, presently holding uh, charge as director CSIR CBRI. The session will be co-chaired by Dr. Amit Chatterjee, who is director R&D Vedanta Limited. Before I hand over the session to the chairman and the co-chair, I am privileged to read a brief biodata of Dr. Anjan Ray, sir. Dr. Anjan Ray is director CSIR Indian Institute of Petroleum, Dehradun and also CSIR, Central Building Research Institute, Roodkey. He got PhD in chemistry from the University of Pennsylvania under the guidance of Nobel laureate, Professor Alan McDermid. He then moved to the chemical industry and worked for over 25 years across functions ranging from quality control, technical services, R&D and marketing to general management, mergers and acquisitions and corporate strategy. His professional interests have spanned fields as diverse as surfactants, oleochemicals, lubricants, coatings, adhesives, textiles, cosmetics, pharmaceuticals, water treatment, energy efficiency, biofuels, and renewable energy policy. He also leads the supply chain vertical of the CSIR strategy group constituted in March 2020 for developing CSIR's concerted response to the COVID-19 pandemic 
and the transformations necessary in the post covid world apart from his professional career in chemical technology dr ray has had an active interest in media education heritage and environment conservation for over 3 decades he is also a recipient of a large number of honors and awards and to name a few the recipient of chemical weekly's padma shri dr gp can chemcon distinguished speaker award in the year 2021 a uh, jury choice award outstanding green energy activist at the third indian green energy awards he is also honorary fellow biotech research society of india fellow of the indian chemical society deepak groups padma bhushan professor lk dorai swami chemcon distinguished speaker award and has also authored a book of short stories in english just beyond with these few words about dr anjan ray sir may i now invite you sir to kindly address us as the session chairman for the panel discussion dr anjan ray please thank you so much for the kind introduction uh dr avnish shrivastav director csir ampri dr anandavalli who i think has not yet joined us director crc my distinguished co-chair dr amit chatterjee from vedanta head of r&d uh other distinguished panelists uh, scientists engineers students scholars entrepreneurs and guests it is a privilege to be chairing this panel discussion on a topic very close to my heart with regard to the utilization of uh, wastes in the construction and engineering industries a lot of my own work over the last few years has focused on aspects of material resource efficiency and i spoke about that in an iconic forum just a couple of days ago the more we are able to utilize the resources that have already been taken out of the ground which have already been extracted out of nature and the more we are able to reutilize them at the lowest possible energy and environmental impact the more sustainable our world will be for future generations we already know how unsustainable it has become we take any ecosystem and we leave human beings out of it as we saw in the lockdown forests rivers lakes mountains all recovered because human beings weren't going there once the lockdown has been lifted and tourists have started traveling we start seeing the same trash we start seeing the same water constraints and progressively every year we see changes in extreme weather events that's on one side on the other side when things were locked down the economy uh took a very severe beating many of the msmes in particular struggled to keep themselves afloat many small businesses closed hotels and hospitality chains had difficulty paying salaries so we are as custodians of technology as well as members of the government we have a responsibility to manage both ends as do for example colleagues on our call who are from industry whether from large organized corporates or from msme because industry ultimately brings in the tax rupees that keeps the economy moving i would say that there's one thing that we should add to the discourse that i expect to hear from all our panelists today we will be requesting you to speak for only 4 to 5 minutes without slides uh, on your specific contributions to be made and i'll be requesting my co-chair to keep an eye on the time for each panelist and at the end of the first cycle of uh, presentations by our panelist speakers we will have a few questions including questions from the audience and then we will give each panelist a chance to wrap up based on what they have heard from others one request to all the panelists is to keep an eye on sustainability when we talked about for example mr mukesh gulati just spoke before me on the work of foundry slag being turned into paper blocks we use the word green and eco friendly very casually in our industries but in actual fact just because we are recycling doesn't make it green recycling needs to also ensure that it's done with low energy or if it's done with significant energy like in a hammer mill or a crusher that that energy is renewable recycling also requires us to keep an eye on human health aspects so the recycling worker should not be exposed to occupational hazards like dust 
which can then give him long-term lung diseases. Recycling also requires an understanding of the supply chain. If I'm going to transport slag over 1,000 or 2,000 kilometers to pulverize and use it, then most probably I'm adding a carbon footprint to it from the transportation because it will use a fossil fuel. All these considerations also have to become part of our ecosystem over time. And as we analyze and encourage people to adapt the new technologies that are coming on offer, we'd like our uh, stakeholders to articulate what their needs are, what problems we need them to solve, and while solving those problems, what constraints we need to keep in mind. Vedanta has done very well. So my, from my uh, co-chair, Vedanta is one of the largest mining companies in the world, which has grown by leaps and bounds over the last several years. It has had its own uh, share of challenges as it has gone through growth. And yet it has been, in many ways, a model corporate citizen at many of its sites. There is a lot of learning that we can get from companies like Vedanta. My first experience of a large uh, a smelter was when I had gone to Bolko in Korba, maybe 40 years ago, as a student. And the first thing I learned, to my extreme surprise, I had no idea, I learned that red mud is radioactive. It is about 100 times as radioactive as ocean water. Of course, it is a lot less radioactive than nuclear waste. I also learned about what kind of minerals it contains. Uh, apart from the aluminum, which naturally comes from the processing of bauxite, it also contains chromium-6. It also contains other minerals, which could be either micronutrients or useful in products. So today, what we are seeing in terms of the red mud uh, resource base in the country is not a mountain of waste, but a mountain of potential wealth. Similarly, whether it's construction demolition waste, whether it is uh, uh, copper tailings, whether it is uh, the residue from zinc mines, from wherever it is, limestone or anything else, there is a need to build a national ecosystem and a build to need to structure the data of what is available where, so that we can focus the research and the resources on the best possible supply chains of waste to the best possible markets for wealth. With that, let me hand over to Dr. Amit Chatterjee and then onwards to our panelists. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Ray, for uh, describing and coming to the uh, topic of the uh, day's discussion. Uh, Dr. Srivastav, Dr. Ashokan, I'm extremely thankful to the organizing committee for inviting me to be part of this discussion today. Industry Connect is a subject which is, which is directly related to the ESG issue that today we are facing. Waste to Wealth, the topic that has been chosen for this entire series of lectures last few weeks that we have heard, is, is something which really gave us a lot of insights about how the West can be utilized and how the West can be utilized in a meaningful way to extract value out of that. What we have seen, there are many products which are, which are developed by the uh, talented group of scientists in the laboratory and then it has gone for the different technology level of exploitation or commercialization, which is a unique thing. Uh, today, probably, it is time that we need to focus on the challenges that in the process the, the, the uh, scientists might have faced or they might face in the time to come. The challenges that I perceive today are the ones like the when we do the commercialization from the laboratory development to the to the product level, the cost, which Mukesh ji has very nicely uh, referred to, and he has mentioned about this in uh, detail, this thing, example of the product, cost becomes a challenge. And what I have seen, my experience says that the development which is possible in the laboratory in the bigger level scientific work that we carry on, when it translates to the product level, then the cost of the development, the, the amount of investment which is required 
and therefore the payback period for that industry calculates everything by the amount of investment it makes and when it comes back to them those things do not really justify the kind of investment which is required for some of the developments and there comes the challenge what i feel whatever development that we do we have to do it in a you know very innovative way and when we do it in an innovative way what i mean really by that it is not the scientific innovation alone we always keep an eye over the kind of economics which are involved in the development of the product and that is what the need of the industry is today more and more we are focused on the economic need of the product better we can address the problem and we can give a product which can really uh, have a good market in the in the uh, industry today so th that that is the one that point that i wanted to bring also the other aspect of the entire development of the life cycle of the development of the product what i really want to emphasize on is that whenever the project for the development of the product from the west starts it is probably the end application of such product which will be extracted out of the west that we need to keep in our mind and we should connect to the to the beneficiary for that kind of product when i say beneficiary it may be sometimes for certain products it may be the consumer themselves so it is the consumer who will be really guiding us what kind of properties are required in a product that they are going to get and with that guidance the development becomes far more guided and the estimation of the cost which is involved in such development will also be far more practical so that that's one point i wanted to emphasize on there may be more dimensions uh, to the particular topic which we have today i have very distinguished uh, panelists today i find here and uh, if i may request that all the panelists come on the screen with their video on then uh, next uh, 20 30 minutes we can have a very lively discussion uh, participating in the challenges that the industry faces from the industry perspective and the uh, inventors also uh, you know come across a lot of challenges they want to serve the industry but there are challenges so which way both the teams can look at the problem and find a common solution for either of them so th th this is what uh, this is the kind of thought that i have uh, today and may i request uh, dr uttam uh, from tata power to share his views on, on the challenges that he has faced in the utilization of the particular uh, probably the service that he expected from the laboratory or the industrial uh, labs namaskar this is uttam bawaskar from tata power first of all i would like to thank uh, dr ashokan for giving me opportunity in this uh, seminar so we are actually looking for uh, see i'm in a power industry our problem is the bottom edge see flash is generally been used by cement industry and in mumbai it is rmc see we are in thermal power generation so flash is being in cement industry as well as in uh, rmc ready mix concrete however we have a problem with bottom ash bottom ash is nothing but a slightly coarser ash which can get connected in the bottom of the boiler uh, hopper yeah. so right. which is actually problem right now it, this is the challenge for us what various our uh, thermal power station how to use this waste bottom ash for a value added uh, material as a value added material uh, as a part of innovation tata industry tata group we are always trying some innovative ideas at our uh, tombe thermal plant in mumbai also we have tried uh, tetra pot you might have seen tetra pots in uh, nariman point we are using for uh, shore protection so we also tried at our local level we have used this bottom ash in tetra pot we already made the tetra pots what we have done is we have used the bottom ash we have replaced 100% sand in concrete and we have uh, able to achieve m30 carat of concrete and we have made that uh, tetra pot using bottom ash and we have used in our coal berth we have our berth also in chembur so uh, that is what we are trying also but that is uh, uh, maybe one of the source but we are looking for a major uh, 
some innovation in this where we can use this water ash for as good as flash. See, flash is the one the problem 20 years back. But now it is developed with this uh, proven technology that people are using for cement and as well as in Hedimis concrete uh, market. So only uh, as from Tata Power, I would like to uh, throw this yeah. that we should uh, see how best we can use this bottom ash, which it looks like so, a sign. Yeah. So, uh, Dr. Uttam, very good point you have brought here. And this is the one that I was harping upon that your requirement that you have, if you are connected from the day one with the inventor, then they can understand the problem that you are facing and what you are expecting. Yeah. And accordingly, they can take up a project and then they can address the different aspects of the development uh, program. Utilizing the bottom mash, which is a coarser ash, we are also generating a lot of bottom mash in our thermal power plants. We are one of the biggest in the thermal power uh, for our aluminum manufacturing. You might be aware of that. 3,650 megawatt you know, thermal power plants we are running. So th that is something what we are aware of. Yeah. So very interesting point. Uh, may I now request my uh, previous group's uh, colleague, uh, Mrs. Vaishali, to share your experience uh, regarding the requirement, the expectation, and uh, which way you think the industry and academics uh, can work together to get maximum out output of the whole association. Thank you, Dr. Amit. And thank you, Dr. Ashok Asukan, for inviting me here. Uh, so just to summarize, I think uh, one is the techno-commercial viability. Some of the applications which I saw, which were shown in this uh, proceedings, they were mesmerizing. Like if Johnson Prism has also seen the importance of red mud in making the anti-radiation uh, tiles, I think it is you and me to come together and, and scale it up. So when it comes to scale it up, it is, I feel, the risk-taking ability of the industry and investment. Yes, uh, there is a lot of research done, but we have to literally invest there. Uh, there can be a failure. And as Thomas Edison says, we have to be ready for failures. Then only some uh, upscaling is possible. So uh, that is one thing. Other is marketing and buying from the end users. So this is where uh, I thought of a good handholding of an end user. And here there is an opportunity that we ourselves as an industry uh, take up this technology, put up some pilots with CSR so that we generate the employment as well as the experiment and also do the handholding for the uh, end users. So here I would like to tell, talk about the bottom ash, which my colleague has just put up an issue. So our Hirapur factory, uh, through the CSR, connected with all the brick manufacturers and taught them, did the handholding, how to use the bottom ash in making the brick. And then we have set up a system in our security gate that whosoever needs how much of bottom ash, they should come and enter by the 10th of the day. And we ensure free delivery to all those guys. You will not believe such a good ecosystem is developed there. Around 220 guys comes and put up their request for bottom ash. And the free delivery is organized at their doorstep from Hindalco factory. So I think such innovative uh, ecosystems uh, coming together and collaborations we'll have to establish. So uh, excellence remains in the pocket, but we'll have to see the opportunities who all can help us in scaling it up. So that's on the bottom ash one thing which just stuck to me. Uh, other is uh, I spoke about uh, so many people contact us on usage of various applications. NML has developed the Pavers Walk. Uh, there is a Coimbatore College who has developed the red mud bricks, which ne doesn't need any. Uh, water and they are all auto setting, doesn't need any energy. And they have taken the steel slag, bottom ash in making those red mud bricks. So that is where now we are trying to develop uh, again a CSR kind of a collaboration with any a brick maker because for them investing 50, 60 lakhs could be a challenge. But if we uh, do partial funding, help them to invest and also give them a confidence of adopting that technology of which they do not have ability to understand TRL level 8 means it will work. And so I should put my 50, 60 lakhs. Okay, so I, I think those are some of the mind blocks which we as an industry educated partners should work in collaboration. And that's how there is a possibility of upskilling every innovation which was put in this forum. Thank you, Doctor. Yeah, yeah, very good point. 
uh, coming to your first point, you mentioned about why H and R Johnson has taken up the manufacturing of the tile uh, using the red mark. Probably uh, you and me should have been uh, doing that. So the answer to that, to me, it appears because I worked in H and R Johnson for almost eight years, and uh, th th that was the company. They know the market of the tiles actually. So the point that I was trying to bring the end consumer. They are very familiar to the end consumer requirement. They know which product will sell and in which segment it will sell. Oh yeah, and that's okay. that's the message. That's the that's the information which is very much required from the day one, and that's the point I'm trying to bring before others also. From the day one, when we take up a developmental project, we should connect to the end consumer who is going to be the likely beneficiary of that, who are going to be using that product, and right. know from them what they really expect out of the product right so, doctor so my point was in fact it is good that they have taken up this project yes. now we should be upscaling it working yeah, with them, in partnership with them so that we can sure. show a bigger market and even partner with them to increase the utilization I can, make a suggestion. I can make a suggestion on this general point of upscaling yeah. yeah in my experience to have anything upscaled you need to present a three-point charter to the potential market the first point should be, who cares? What is the actual value to the end user? The end user doesn't care about sustainability. They don't care about water setting. No. They care about, you know, how many how many rupees per want. brick. Yes. Literally how many rupees per brick, etc. Yes. The first is who cares? The second is the technical feasibility of that upscaling. Very often, when you're doing it at a small scale, it is possible because a controlled environment. Yeah. For an MSME to go take the risk on a new technology, they have to be convinced that if they put in X rupees at the end of every working day, they can count X plus delta rupees because an MSME has to, for an MSME profit is not as important as is working capital. The third thing is relative to the next best alternative. So for the, for the end user, if it is not something that is uh, available to scale and available where they need it through their usual channels that they're used to getting it, then it becomes difficult. So what I would always suggest is if you're trying to put a new product into the market, particularly through MSME channels, to have stakeholder meetings in areas where there is a pain yeah. point that this can address. A, a product forward effort very rarely succeeds in the MSME market. Usually it is a demand backed effort that I see succeeding. So this is what my suggestion, if you feel that there is a particular college that needs handholding, I'm sure CSIR would be very happy to provide that handholding and help them get to that ecosystem. So on behalf of my colleagues here at CBR and Empri, yeah. I'm making an offer right up front. Thanks. Very, very good. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ray. Very good point. And uh, <clears throat> uh, we, we have Dr. Bansal with us from Hartco. Dr. Bansal, are you there? I'm there. Yes. Yeah, probably you are the you are on the consumer side. Yes. Uh, for yes. some of the products which we are discussing, which we have been discussing last few weeks, so you can tell us uh, what your expectations are when which you know uh, model of association between the CSIR labs and the consumer will really help uh, the product development uh, to a successful you know uh, target. Uh, thank you. Thank you for the invitation in this wonderful conference. I, mean, I learned a lot. But in fact, uh, I am from the user department who is into, you know, uh, actual construction on the ground, uh, right. pan India basis. So we use different uh, materials because the climates are different, uh, geological conditions are different, living patterns are different, materials availability are different, and, you know, the vulnerabilities are also different. The material has to be local, it has to be a performance oriented. For example, if you're working in Gujarat, then obviously the good quality fire bricks are generally not available. So, so flash bricks are available. Sometimes this uh, brick has to be manufactured on the site uh, using either concrete, which is called the hollow concrete blocks or something. So the trouble is that, that you know, that the material has to be a performance and cost effective because otherwise it's not going to be used. So we have standards on a lot of materials, but these materials are either not uh, available on the ground or not cost effective. For example, red mud is available near the bauxite plants. So if it has to be used, it has to be used in that cash pit area, otherwise transportation cost and yes. you know, uh, you know uh, this uh, uh, the other uh, energy cost will be too high. 
Uh, yeah. So, so, so we are using different materials which are commercially available on the area, and we are the people have the confidence in that. And if people don't have the confidence in that, we are creating some model units on the site and get it tested in the field, either the shape table, shock table, load test, and that. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. 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 Uh, Mr. Sudhir, uh, were yeah. you trying to speak something? Yes. Okay. Maybe by default. So, so, so we are experimenting with a lot of materials. And in fact, uh, we are very keen to have different materials. Like uh, you know, we have been approached by NIT and Nagpur that they are developing this sugar cane bagasse ash based bricks. The experimental performance of these bricks is both very good, but the trouble is that that they are not commercially available. There is no code on that, especially the Indian standard or VSTM on that. So how to use it? And secondly, we are not into R&D activities. We just finance different institutions all over the country to develop the product so that the product can be taken up by some industry and may be available for commercial use at a affordable price in different categories. So all these products are very good, but the trouble is that, that even the codes are not there, even Indian standard, but ASTM codes are available. But how to use it when the product is not commercially available in the area? Yes. Second question is this that some waste materials uh, like uh, you know uh, manufactured sand and manufactured aggregates are available, and they are allowed uh, to be used in construction by certain percentage as per IS 383. But these materials are being processed in uh, these, uh, these very centralized uh, plants, so cost of transportation to and fro from both sides is another question. So my suggestion is this thing that whatever materials we're developing that has to be portable, that has to be decentralized so that cost of transportation, cost of logistics and availability of that mill has to be available in the catchment area so it can be used uh, sustainably and effectively. And we are ready to use it because nowadays this even the NBC has allowed that performance based uh, material can be used even if it is not there in NBC, then ASTM, Europort, Dinco can be referred. Or, uh, the, the designer has to satisfy themselves so they can be developed. But commercially, availability of the product has to be there along with the sustainability. That's only my question. We are ready to use. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think Do Dr. Bansal, you have uh, mentioned a very important point availability of the material and availability of the market to the proximity of the, the manufactured product. These are the certain challenges which we have also seen because the waste is generated in a place where there is no market of a product. If I make out of that, then I go to the market. By that time, probably I have to travel quite a few hundred of kilometers and the cost of my uh, manufacturing and, and cost of delivering to the market increases. So these are certain challenges which we face. Uh, my experience with the bagash ash, what I have seen, bagash ash is 100% usable as ash in the cement pozzolanic uh, system. However, bagash ash in the way the uh, sugarcane industry runs in the uh, Uttar, Uttar Pradesh region I have seen, there is always a contamination of the carbon particles yeah. in that. The kind of boilers which they are using, there always comes the unburned carbon and that becomes a problem. So what we have seen that there are certain waste which are useful normally. However, they are also contaminated by certain things and getting rid of that unburned carbon is a big challenge. And for that, the use of the bagash ash has not been possible to the extent we could think of. So that, that is something my experience, I have my experience on the use of that in my previous organization. Uh, Dr. Ruhi, you want to share something on your experience? Good afternoon, sir. Uh, uh, first of all, thanks to CS Director uh, Amri, Dr. Shokadar, and uh, Dr. Amit, sir. I'm Dr. Ruhi. I have done research under uh, CSR lab on biocomposite. Uh, actually, I make totally biodegradable uh, CSR fiber composites. But uh, after that research, that, that composite in papers only, and it, and it cannot come in the industrial form or it. Today we need a replacement of plastic. Agar ye, uh, if uh, that product came into the product form, though it will be used as a plastic re replacement. 
so i just focus as a forester right now i am in forest services so as a forester uh, i just want to share in forest field what we required right now uh, actually in forest related issues some for, uh, forest fire is the big issue for forest department actually it causing uh, lots of climate uh, climate change and also forest degradation and uh, greenhouse gases emission and these forest fire main cause due to the agriculture waste mm -hmm. uh, burning of agriculture waste yeah. so the last yesterday ashokan sir uh, um, uh, shows a replacement uh, he developed a technology for agriculture based uh, composites and uh, i my main point is that we should research at the current scenario. So we should uh, our research should be time uh, limited time time focus. We research two three years and after the de when uh, demand is uh, demand of that product uh, products we cannot uh, give the product of that demand. So uh, our demand our research should be cost effective and demand oriented and uh, uh, our in forest department. Uh, uh, like uh, agriculture waste residue composites, yeah. uh, uh, many alternatives are available on, in, on which small industry uh, can be right. set up. Like right now, right now, uh, uh, plastics are banned in right. India. So in our plantation, in our plantations, ma uh, many polybags are used used for plantation saplings. Routiners are useful. Yeah. So alternative can be generated at the right now. In uh, uh, if we develop uh, uh, alternative in a, in a year, it can be used in industry right. form, and it can, it will give profit to the industry because uh, if any industry cannot uh, take uh, uh, profit, then it will be uh, no use of that technology. Yeah. Thank you. Thank yeah. you very Thank much, you. Uh, Dr. Ruhi. You mentioned about two very good points. One is the time to market which is a very important factor and the cost effectiveness of the product. So whatever development we target, we should have a target to reach the market in a uh, in the form of a project in a defined way and the cost effectiveness of the product. So this is very, very essential, you know, to focus on. Uh, Dr. Ashokan, uh, you are there. OK, Dr. Ashokan might have not been uh, there. Sir, Dr. Ashokan sir is here only. Yeah, he is here, sir. Okay. No, I, I was uh, trying to request uh, him. Yesterday, he showed a very exciting development. The Parali, uh, use of the Parali for making the uh, particle board kind of a thing. And uh, the product that he had displayed, I would like to know from him two things. Uh, when he started this project, what was the time uh, that he had in his mind to reach the market? That is number one. Uh, did he uh, do any estimate of the cost at which he should deliver the product to the market? And the third thing I would mention about it is from the way I saw the product and my reaction that probably this kind of board, uh, with this kind of board, one can think of constructing furniture also. Did you have ever thought about that point? And there probably the connect with the consumer is essential. If you get connected to the consumer, the consumer will probably tell you they try to do a development for this kind of product with the material that you have developed. So what was your approach, Dr. Ashokan? Yeah, uh, uh, thank you very much, sir. I am audible, I believe. Yes, 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 please. Yeah, thank you very much, sir. Actually, it's, uh, whatever the topic you asked yesterday, in yeah. fact, uh, we have started uh, the five years back, maybe. Uh -huh. Just before the COVID start, okay, uh, we started uh, working on particularly on the agro waste uh, composite material. Yes. Earlier, we have very strong uh, uh, research expertise on inorganic waste recycling technology. That maybe maybe whenever occasion comes, I will discuss about the the composite similar to the parali board, uh, the the board which can be used for. Uh, uh, used uh, using the inorganic waste uh, particulate. So now the question is related to the agro waste parali you are asking. Uh, one is the cost uh, primarily. I really appreciate finally whatever research you do it finally to come to the price. So uh, we will compare with the market price particle bodies. It 28 rupees per square feet available. Mm -hmm. 
when we go to the market to buy by our own so we ask for even bargain with many shop and finally come out with maybe 26 rupees 22 rupees in the market the particle board price varying from 22 rupees up to even 75 rupees depends on the quality of the material now our parali board the price in the lab lab research yeah because we, we are purchasing the polymer primarily the price of the polymer is very important. the polymer yeah right. we purchase from Ahmedabad and gujarat all the way it is coming to some dealer to endure from another dealer from po, to Popal. so where 120 rupees polymer price in the manufacturing setup we are getting almost 450 rupees per kilogram hmm. so but whatever calculation we have made with the 450 rupees only so when we compare with the 450 rupees of that polymer per mm. square feet, let us take maybe like we have the thickness of 20 millimeter thickness, similar to the particle board or 19 millimeter. So one square feet price is coming about 18 rupees to 20 rupees. But when mm. we, we, we compare the price of polymer is only 120 rupees, the price will be abnormally is cheaper than the traditional product. So okay. now, now the, okay, the price is like this. Now the commercialization perspective, commercial. Sir, all ma major industries are there. No major industry is coming forward to take up the technology for commercial production. Only small entrepreneurs, they are coming. They are not having investment uh, capacity mm. of uh, one crore rupees investing it. Now, doctor, I think uh, uh, Mr. VP, Singh Walia is there, is a director MSME Haryana cluster. Now we wanted to have their support. He is from MSME, from Haryana yeah. region. Yeah. They know the real problem in Haryana and Punjab. How to create an investment in this? I am asking, provide 200 rupees crore, 200 crore rupees, like creating like a major infrastructure. The entire Parali is started out to converting into a viable board. We will make a Parali India your column and beam, not only this uh, partition wall. Mm -hmm. The architect uh, Mr. Asim Rawat is sitting from Bangalore for architectural cladding panel in civil infrastructure. Whether yes. you make in your airport or whether you use in your, your uh, this, uh, Delhi Central Vista or this uh, railway infrastructure, this can be used there. So yes, we yes. have the opportunity only like a Coca-Cola manufacturing, no automation. You just pump yeah. a parali, it will process it, it will customize the raw material such a way. Finally, we will only collect the product, but a lot of investment needed as a researcher. And Dr. Ashokan, this was a very exciting development. I liked it very much. So one thought was coming to my mind whether this can be used for furniture manufacturing also. That was the point. Yes. If this could be done, to my understanding, the market volume would really multiply the volume of market which you can get in furniture because particle board furnitures are very common. We are using extensively almiras and other things we have seen. If this kind of parali boards can be used, then that would completely change the whole scenario. And in that direction, what I was suggesting, if you can connect to a consumer, make an almira, get the opinion and test the parameters like the machine ability and other points you mentioned then probably that would be a very good addition to your product basket Sir. using this kind of material yeah thank, thank you very much for the maybe i'll uh, take half a minute sir with your permission yeah maybe knowing yes, IK, you, you may be ike you know the ikea ikea ikea, IKEA yeah. Godrey interior these are the companies you can yeah. really contact yeah no they are chasing us actually for this product oh that's very good really. yeah he's that's chasing us they are creating trying to find out entrepreneur for commercial production that's that we good. are moving forward in this area very good very good that's very good thank you very much thank you yeah yeah uh, do, do, dr vp singh uh, probably wants to share something good evening sir uh, thank you so much dr amit chatterji and special thanks to dr ashokan for uh, giving me such a platform i would like to bring to your kind notice that we are having a gasifier technology here uh, mm -hmm. 
one industry in Chandrapur works, they have installed a gasification technology by which they are, uh, you know, changing that waste into uh, converting it to a, a power plant. You know, they are having one megawatt power plant here, located near Yamuna Nagar. You know, my area of uh, command is Yamuna Nagar only. So, uh, at any point of time, if you want, uh, we can have a collaboration with them as well. The other thing which I would like to bring to your kind notice, since all the good scientists are there, sir, there is a big problem uh, in terms of uh, plywood industry. What it is facing is uh, uh, the urea is used for making their resin. Now, the technical grade urea, the prices have gone uh, very high. They have escalated like hell. So, with those prices, making of resin uh, and using it, uh, it becomes very impossible. And uh, in terms, you know, the sustainability of the industry is into question. So, I would like all the scientists to please work on this field and uh, work for a replacement for this urea. You know, it will help the economy and the industry both ways. The other thing uh, that I would uh, like to bring to your kind notice that the uh, government of Haryana has uh, you know, initiated the HEAP 2020 policy. And under that policy, we are also having a scheme of R&D. So mm -hmm. uh, we are trying that some of the industry, although some of them have already taken the benefits, but now under HEAP 2020, since the fund is uh, high, so we are uh, trying that some of the industries should join hands with the institutes like CSIR, and uh, they should get the benefit of R&D. Uh, one of the speakers, they uh, pointed out uh, regarding the microfinance, you know, some micro industries uh, uh, need their finances. So, we also have a scheme of PMEGP where we uh, provide them with loans of uh, up to 50 lakhs with a massive 35 percent subsidy. And uh, the last thing which uh, I would like to request is, see, whatsoever uh, waste is being used to formulate into new products, the environment issue should be taken uh, good yes. care of. You know, that is the foremost requirement. You know, I've seen the sludge units here. They they bring about the sludges from uh, some of the aluminium big, big houses. So, uh, they convert it and they extract the metal out of it. But at the end of the day, that is, you know, not very environment friendly. The atmosphere as a whole is not environment friendly. Then the labor is uh, a sufferer and they have lung diseases out of it. So, these are the basic points which came into my mind and uh, thank you once again, Dr. Ashokan, for providing such a nice platform. Thank you. Thank you, Varya, sir. I wanted to add to this point of yours that CSIR also has a scheme called Nimitly, where if you have an industry partner, and particularly if you can get support from organizations and departments like yours, the industry partner can receive a soft loan and the CSR partner will receive a grant for doing the relevant research. And this is okay. applicable for both MSMEs and corporates. So, if you have okay. a problem where national value can be demonstrated in the proposal, yeah. uh, normally it takes, it goes through a very rigorous evaluation of six to eight months under the M NMITLI scheme, briefly okay. called Nimitly. Okay. But it is an attractive scheme. So, that scheme has actually helped even apart from various uh, MSMEs, it has helped Mahindra launch its first e vehicle. It has helped uh, launch uh, a reading device for the nearly blind. Uh, it's it's a fairly good uh, and very flexible scheme for okay. MSMEs who want to try new technology. And it, the technology doesn't have to be from CSIR, but it is uh, additionally helpful if it is from CSIR. Uh, could I get the name of that scheme again, please? Yeah, it is NMITLI, Nimitly. N New Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much, sir. And Dr. Ashokan has my contact. And uh, if you come across uh, nearby Yamuna Nagar any time, I would like to invite you to Yamuna Nagar. We'll have hold a meeting here with the yeah. industrialist, and uh, uh, we can do amicably with the CSIR. We can. I hope we can do something good here. Thank so you. So I am very close to Yamuna Nagar, Baliya Sab. I am only two hours away. I'm wow. Sure wow. Him, <laughs> Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much. Then we'll organize a meeting for you, sir. Thank you so much. Sir. Thank you. Thank sir. you. Very good. Uh, Dr. Ray, I will take this opportunity uh, since uh, we have been discussing on the waste wealth. So, carbon dioxide uh, capture and the utilization is one area where uh, we have our own interest because we have decarbonization program. By 2050, we want to make it zero carbon uh, footprint. 
So uh, if possible for you to uh, provide us some clue and guidance on uh, the conversion of the carbon dioxide to say methanol or other industrial product. Dr. Chatterjee, maybe yeah. I can invite you over to Dehradun. And sure. also, if you have a chance, please go over to Pune and to Dhanbad. We okay. have uh, CO2 to methanol and CO2 to other product programs going on. Okay. We have a particularly interesting new program on CO2 to propylene uh, right now uh, that you okay. can take a look at. So please come over and we'll definitely sure. support you. Thank you. Very good. Uh, I have not interacted with Dr. Anandavalli, Director CSIR SERC. Are you there, sir? Uh, sir, actually, I received, I received a message from Dr. Anandavalli. Okay. Uh, our former DG CSIR uh, okay. arrived there and they are having a meeting. She told okay. she will join as soon as that meeting is over. That was unexpected. Suddenly, they started. Apologies for the inconvenience in this matter. And maybe okay. we can continue with the uh, our program, sir. Thank you very okay. much. Uh, as a, as a general topic, I would uh, like to place uh, before all of you uh, my, my thought process and of course, uh, then you, uh, any of you can come up with your suggestion that for a better cohesion between the CSIR labs and the industry like us. And, and my general experience is this, that sometimes there is a lot of hesitation from the inventing scientists to discuss and offer the product or the invention that they have done. They probably want to take more time to validate the product at the laboratory level. They do not want to share the details of the work that they have done unless they complete certain set of experiments and they, they get complete confidence out of that. My suggestion here is that we should work out on a business model or a, a model for association between the CSIR labs and the industry in a manner from the day one industry is connected with the project that you have either initiated on your own or, or there is a national program kind of a thing. There are projects which we are, of course, sponsoring to the CSIR labs. So from the day one, they are connected with us. They know the target. They know the challenges we will face in scaling up this kind of project. However, if it is done for all the project, what I believe that this is something which is going to drastically uh, you know, uh, change the scenario and speed up some of the developments. Because from the day one, the requirements are known uh, from the beneficiary and then the developments are far more guided than probably what they are at the moment. There are a few examples with me. I do not want to go uh, subject by subject, but uh, I, I just share my experience that there have been some kind of hesitation from the inventing scientists, what I have observed in sharing and uh, you know in presenting the work unless it comes to a certain point so uh, what will be the kind of you know uh, uh, reaction from you how will you uh, how will you respond to this those who are in the csir labs at a very senior you know scientific position Yes, sir. Uh, this is Devendra Singh from CSR headquarters. Could you hear me? Yes. Yes, yes. I can hear you, Dr. Sir. Devendra. Yeah. So, sir, at uh, CSR, we have a scheme called fast, uh, you know, fast track uh, commercialization. Like we have two uh, schemes, FTT type of project, where is a transnational of, you know, TRL level of technology is increased by the right. scientists. Another is the commercialization type of project where technology is, you know, at a almost a final stage and it can be with the industry partner, it can be, you know, uh, used for commercialization purpose. Mm -hmm. So in those, uh, in these kind of project, we insist with the researcher, you come up with the industry partner. So most of the final stage, you know, finalization or experiment and technology development is done in collaboration with the industry partner. So it is at that stage, all the requirement or specification from the customer point of view, from industry point of view, and instead of the, you know, environment of lab setting, it would be the industry environment setting in which the product is demonstrated. So okay. uh, generally, uh, like uh, we have receiving uh, the proposal, the amount is around, uh, you know, in terms of percentage of around 10, 20 to 30 percent of project are in that category. But we are from headquarters, we are encouraging our scientists 
to get more number of ftg project get more number of industry from the starting when you are you know at the beginning of the project yeah when project proposal is submitted so it when uh, industries input are considered so uh, the business plan of the such technology also can be you know planned accordingly or can be prepared right based on their inputs right so we are we are working on that direction sir but maybe yeah. we need a little more push uh, in this direction to have more and more industry partner in our projects okay okay, okay. okay. very good thank you thank you very much for the update uh, we have not uh, discussed with dr jagan dr jagan you are there dr jagan sir we have received a communication that uh, due to some unavoidable circumstances dr jagan is not able to join at the moment uh, once he okay. is uh, free from okay, okay. some meeting or some issue then he'll try to join immediately but at the moment he is not available sir okay so if anybody is having any point uh, you can please uh, bring forth and we can have a deliberation on that we are almost uh, coming to the end of this session another few minutes left to my understanding yeah uh, see uh, good afternoon to all of you uh, i am dayananda and uh, i was uh, heading the industry interface at csir okay right now i am based in bangalore yeah uh, see um, the other uh, uh, point of view view is uh, the industry can also upfront uh, say what exactly they want uh, and then the CSR lab can develop uh, the same for the industry because as uh, Dr. Amit was mentioning, the industry has a better appreciation of the market needs, which CSIR may not be having. So the, if uh, the industry is very clear about what exactly they want, CSIR can rise up to that occasion. Hmm. Right, right. Very good point. Uh, Dr. Dayanand, I would... <clears throat> like to uh, you know mention here one point that industry like us and uh, hindalco the big industry houses we are well aware of the role of csir and i know many people personally in the csir labs and whenever i have a project with me i have straight away gone and told them please please do this work and we have sponsored the project and at the moment we are running three four such project with csir lab uh, quite a few project with iits so all the national laboratories where the knowledge is there, we are trying to utilize that. But for industries, yeah. which are probably small, they are probably in the MSME or even smaller, they may not be knowing the kind of development which the CSIR lab is already having in a particular uh, you know, uh, product. So for them, in order to attract them to the kind of development which is going on, it is probably CSIR, which is a much bigger organization at national level. They have to reach out to the small industry and make them as a partner from the day one. This is what I was suggesting. That kind of business model would really work fast and your time to reach the market to the consumer need would be faster than probably what it is today. This is, this is the view that I am possessing. I'm just sharing with you and others may also share their views. Okay. Yes, uh, I would like to share my view. I am yeah, uh, I am into manufacturing of plywood, uh, right. which is MSME sector, and yeah. uh, and see uh, the waste management is automatically done. See, uh, once we get the wood inside our factory, so we use the maximum part, and the waste part is used as fuel. So see what what we have used the plantation timber from the agriculture yield which has already which has already captured the carbon dioxide and given us oxygen earlier mm -hmm. then, okay then the tree is cut and it's inside our factory so five percent to ten percent it is used as fuel mm -hmm. so 90 percent of the carbon is inside and we sell the plywood and it is used in furniture so carbon locking is done automatically Okay, for Great. how many decades? And uh, uh, I know I need to tell that we should recognize this industry as uh, uh, that it is preventing and capturing CO2 and uh, and locking the carbon inside furniture. Mm -hmm. So, so national recognition is needed. 
in uh, particle board or MDF units. Mm -hmm. And see, Bagasi is also used. So once Bagasi is used, it's totally closed in partitions and furniture, very widely used Bagasi boards. And secondly, <clears throat> some ideas can be taken what is happening with the other countries. See, mm -hmm. uh, China also using this uh, Parali board. The product is used widely by government construction people. No, they use that material themselves, and no tax is imposed mm. on that material. So the the material is cost effective. I have seen the product. I have seen the plant also that was making uh, uh, Parali particle board, and the product was very good, and it costed around fifty to fifty eight rupees. The uh, cost was almost free of the Parali. And the plant cost was the, totally. It was like fifty-two, and it is very cheaper from other products. So yeah. we can we can already uh, have idea and meetings with other countries, people also, and see the ideas they are doing. So right. uh, so I need to say that key the the MS the MSME people should get involvement with it in the discussions with CSR. Like today, I am up, uh, I have the opportunity to speak here, so uh, and give them platform to come up with the ideas. Very good, very good point. Thank you, sir. Dr. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Doctor Ashok, and any other point uh, you have uh, before, others, before others, which we can uh, deliver it on? Yeah, actually, yeah, actually, Doctor. Yeah, thank you very much, sir. Uh, whatever the point Dr. Amit Goel addressed, that we seriously will uh, take up that one and proceed. And we will, we will be visiting them, we will interact to move forward on this, uh, Dr. Goel ji. Thank you very much for your intervention. Hello. Sir, maybe since we have very limited time, no, there are a couple no, of people, no, they are there, no, they no, want no, to no, share no. some of their view. We can proceed, sir. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, sir, uh, this is Akram Khan uh, from CSR Empri. With your permission, may I say something? Yes, please. Uh, thank you so much, sir. Uh, sir, this is uh, regarding a very important observation that we heard from Dr. Uttam Pavaskar, sir, uh, who is from Tata Power. And yes. uh, sir was talking about uh, having developed some uh, tetrapod using bottom ash. So yeah. uh, on this uh, forum, sir, I would like to inform you that uh, CSR Empri has also worked on developing advanced geopolymeric tetrapods uh, where we have used this uh, silo fly ash and uh, this has been done uh, under a project which was given to us by NTPC and uh, mm -hmm. we have successfully developed and demonstrated these advanced uh, geopolymeric tetrapods uh, at their NTPC Simhadri uh, power plant. Uh, so this is a piece of information that sir I would like to share that uh, we have worked and we have developed uh, we hold a patent also and uh, IP is protected and that uh, mold was also specifically designed and developed by CSR Ampri and this is a, a totally cement free through geopolymeric route sir we have developed this uh, uh, tetrapod and this has been demonstrated also by laying them at uh, NTPC Simhadri uh, coastline also a large number of tetrapods are lying. Yeah. Dr. Uh, Dr. Khan, I had a question to you. Uh, what, what would be the price of this geopolymer-based uh, concrete? If I, uh, if I make a geopolymer-based concrete out of uh, the uh, coarse fly ash or uh, yes, sir. Uh, bed ash, Rabi what will be the price? Huh? Sir, as bed to ash, the normal uh, we, sir, we did not attempt with the bed ash. We went ahead with the fly ash in this, sir, because... Uh, they wanted us to utilize their silo fly ash and we added a novel component of using sea sand and sea water also. Like uh, we did not use any uh, fresh uh, river sand, we did not use any normal uh, fresh uh, water. Okay. So that was exclusively for the silo fly ash, sea sand and sea water. But then we attempted it with the uh, silo fly ash for the other power plants also. Uh, coming to your uh, that cost economic part, sir, we worked out certain cost economics uh, where we were around uh, 10 to 15 percent cheaper when we worked with the silo fly ash based tetrapod uh, when compared with the conventional concrete uh, tetrapod. We made con conventional concrete tetrapod also and we did okay. a very comp uh, comparative study using all the relevant IS codes. Okay. Uh, 
but okay. uh, we can sir okay. uh, like uh, if tata power is interested then we can go ahead on this uh, through some project mode or any such joint initiative which can be an industry driven need based uh, project that can be addressed yes. by csr empre under ways to wealth yeah that is possible secondly sir just to add on uh, further on this we have also worked on uh, like uh, one of our speaker i am not remembering they talked about uh, some uh, this uh, uh, aggregate part so by use of this uh, pondash and uh, bedash sir we have uh, under a project from ntpc moda which is near nagpur we developed these synthetic uh, coarse aggregate and synthetic fine aggregates also mm -hmm. so these are some of the activities where i am sure we can attract uh, industrial sectors who generate uh, uh, large quantities of fly ash pond ash uh, and also even for this red mud sir i am happy to share that csr ampri has already you know developed this technology which has been successfully transferred to prism johnson which is about radiation shielding tiles from red mud and very soon this product would be in the market also we are going to launch it very soon so we are yeah. in a big way on radiation shielding material using red mud and some very of our colleagues are also working on brine sludge which is again a very challenging industrial waste sir so yeah. uh, to this august gathering i take this opportunity to inform that at csr empri sir we have a strong uh, presence on waste to wealth we have already completed large number of industry driven activities and we look forward to any such projects that uh, can be taken up on a mutual uh, basis that's from my side thank you sir uh, sir this is bhanu verma from csir ipu am i audible yes please yes, dr bhanu i think uh, you have yeah. a presentation now yeah i minutes. had been just requested by dr shokan that you may start uh, your presentation so i just and i am not able to see anything i am just able to see my presentation can so you, if can you, can you please put it into slide show mode it's not yes yes yeah. yes sir yes sir uh, so... is it visible in a uh, yes. slide show mode now yes, yes. Sir. Yeah, so I am uh, Dr. Bhanu Verma from CSIR IPU. I am representing uh, the IP protection wing of CSIR at the headquarters, and I had been specially uh, invited for uh, participating in the waste to wealth in civil infrastructure engineering and uh, for SNT industry intervention and achieve Atman Nirbhar Bharat. Uh, I uh, take this opportunity to thank uh, Dr. Avinash uh, Kumar Srivastav, uh, uh, Director M. Prisa, Dr. Anandavalli, uh, Director Chair CIE Team, um, uh, Dr. Anjan Ray, the esteemed chair of the session, Dr. Amit Chatterjee, uh, co-chair of the session, panel discussion, and uh, not uh, not the least, uh, Dr. Akram Khan and Dr. Sarika and Dr. Ashokan uh, from Ampri side. Uh, I would like to make a brief presentation about uh, CSIR IPU and the activities that CSIR IPU does, which help in uh, protecting the IP generated from the research across CSIR 37 laboratories. And then we do maintain a kind of uh, interaction with the lab to collect the data regarding licensing. And we represent the data at wherever, at the forums, wherever this is wanted. The activities at CSIR IPU that we undertake are uh, regarding Indian patent drafting, filing prosecution in India and abroad, in various uh, jurisdictions abroad, uh, dealing with uh, requirements, meeting the requirements of NBA, wherein the require. Uh, the technology or the innovation is using utilizing biological resource from India. Then we are also filing other IP like uh, trademark, design, copyrights, etc. And we are doing this for all lab laboratory across CSIR, including uh, CSIR headquarters also, because we do have some trademark and copyrights here. Uh, we do deal with MOUs pertaining to IPR and we conduct IP awareness programs across CSIR laboratories and outside for organizations outside wherever we are required to and requested from. Uh, we are dealing with one uh, important uh, award for school children, which, which is CSIR Innovation Award for School Children, and which is distributed by the Prime Minister of India on the Foundation Day. Further, we are conducting trainings for uh, research interns and fellows in IP regarding matters, which include CSIR IP uh, in, uh, interns and fellows and uh, TIFAC interns uh, from our sister organization, DST. And we are maintaining IP uh, uh, across all jurisdictions uh, 
including India and abroad. There is a brief lay of outlay of the patent filed and granted in India and abroad. You will uh, be able to see that in 2021-22, which is the current data of the just uh, past year, 21-22, we had filed uh, 229 uh, application in India and 202 uh, patents were granted in India. Uh, in uh, foreign jurisdictions across uh, the globe, we have filed 163 uh, applications and we have been granted 158 applications. This is for the year 2021 and 2022. You would see that there is a fall in foreign filing uh, in foreign jurisdiction, which is a, a conscious decision, conscious decision taken by CSIR. Uh, headquarters CSIR IPO and in consultation with all the eight themes and theme directors that we are uh, going to limit our expenditure uh, for filing and maintaining wherever we see the technologies are not being commercialized. Uh, we will see these are the uh, eight themes that we file patent into and we are maintaining across in these themes. Uh, uh, which includes CIE if you see the number. And I'll give a brief outlay of the expenditure that um, uh, of the licensing part that we have been able to achieve across the um, uh, board in all the themes. It is 12.2% for uh, uh, across the board uh, licensing in CSIR laboratories and total of 158 cases which have been licensed to industry. Um, in CIE theme particularly, uh, I will say that during the last 10 years, 113 patent applications had been filed and 68 have been granted in India. And approximately CIE is uh, amongst the highest uh, uh, number of uh, patents which are being licensed, that is 25%. The number is though small, uh, the patent filing number uh, is though small uh, compared to the other patents. This is the data of last 10 years and the licensing part is 25% uh, of the patents which have been uh, filed and you will uh, see that what the CSIR has uh, realized about 2 crores uh, from uh, the licensing and these licensing have been not only uh, in the format of uh, um, uh, uh, Exclusive licensing, they have been uh, licensing across uh, non-exclusive licensing has also been there, wherein uh, the uh, uh, one application has been licensed to more than two or three or five, at the most five also at times, um, to the industrial partners. CSIR has, uh, you see a lot of, uh, I, due to the IP activity, CSIR has got a lot of appreciation and we have been able to benchmark our organization, uh, not only in India, uh, but uh, uh, globally also CSIR is making its presence felt uh, due to its IP uh, uh, portfolio. And uh, you can see that uh, we have received the uh, uh, appreciation certificate uh, from patent office. Uh, we have a, uh, a Shimago rating in CSR is in the top 25 government agencies. Uh, we have received Clarivet award. We have received uh, for South Asia also. And we have received various uh, awards in uh, CIA and other forums. Uh, that is uh, once again the uh, awards. I would like to take uh, two more minutes of the uh, panel and like to quote two or three cases uh, where we have seen that, uh, you know, waste utilization has been there. One is uh, the Ampri case wherein we had uh, filed, uh, one, some of the colleagues are, might be hearing that, bamboo-based composite material uh, and process for preparation thereof, which had been filed to Paramali Valos uh, Private Limited in Bhopal itself. And this was a technology which was actually filed in 2019 only and it was licensed within a year or so of uh, the patent being filed. One more example which is a very, uh, and this technology for the bamboo based uh, composite material, th this is using fresh bamboo, green bamboo which is uh, abundantly grown and abundantly present and it does not, uh, you know, cause any damage to the forest or the uh, timber industry uh, to the forest cover and that timber is not used for making these boards and all. 
Uh, another interesting technology I would like to quote is SIMFER technology. Uh, this is a process for preparation of slow release potassium fertilizer from combustion waste of biomass based power plants. And this technology actually, this is a case which uh, wherein we have found an industrial partner through uh, uh, the laboratory has done that actually. CSIR IPU has not played any role, but it has come uh, to us also because we were handling this case uh, for. Uh, prosecution related issues and we had filed the case and we had prosecuted the application and we had found out that EID Perry uh, India Limited Chennai has taken up and it is funding the scaling up process and they are going to build they are they are establishing an industry on that and they have it is a kind of a project mode uh, and it we had received this in uh, e, uh, from the expression of interest uh, part and this way also the technology is working and this partnership is also resulting in which the industry is uh, you know funding the uh, uh, technology and they are uh, scaling it up and then once the uh, industry established and scaled the process is scaled up the royalty will be realized uh, by CSIR. CSIR uh, scientists on their part are going to the industry partner and they are helping them to establish uh, the industry and giving the know-how for the same. So th this is a very short kind of introduction to I, uh, Innovation Protection Unit, uh, which is a kind of, um, you know, a unit which is uh, uh, taking care of protecting the IPR, not only for patents, but also trademarks, which also are a source of, uh, you know, licensing and source of uh, uh, income to CSIR. Uh, and also for uh, copyrights and designs of the technologies, especially engineering based technologies. So we are helping our labs across and uh, IPU is a unit which is playing a major role uh, in also building a uh, benchmarking for CSIR and uh, giving it visibility in the innovation scenario. I will thank, uh, I would like to thank uh, uh, Dr. Anjan Ray, uh, esteemed panelist, panel uh, chair, uh, Dr. Chatterjee, um, uh, co panel co-chair, and uh, uh, Dr. Ashokan Pappu and Dr. Abhinash Srivastav uh, for giving this opportunity. Of course, Dr. Anandavalli, uh, the session chair, uh, the Team director is not available and we have missed this opportunity, but uh, we would like to interact with her also whenever given opportunity. Thank you, sir. Thank you, uh, Dr. Bhanu. Uh, given you, the interest of time, let, let me go on to some of the raised hands. Uh, uh, Mr. Tazim, he's an architect, has had his hand up for some time. So, may I him to speak? Uh, Dr. Bhanu, kindly unshare your slides. I, I will try. I will try, Anjan. I will try, uh, Akram. Yes. Sorry, I'm so sorry. Okay. Uh, may, I, may I speak? Tazim here. Uh, I don't know how they A little bit loud, sir. Uh, you're very soft, but yeah, please, please speak. Namaskar to all the esteemed panelists, organizers, and CSIR, AMPRI, team scientists, and members. Uh, as an architect, I just wanted to uh, mention some very few points. Number one point is that I need to know what product is available. Uh, I was lucky that I happened to just meet Dr. Ashokan for a particular project for which I was doing some R&D. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, I came through this very interesting product that Mr. Ashokan had developed, uh, which was, uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, red mud X-ray radiation shielding panels. Uh, this is a substitute to lead, which is used for all the X-ray shielding uh, rooms, which is made for MRI machines and all those things. So this. I think this is one of a kind in the world. This was the only place where I could find a substitute to lead, which was helping us. Now, I really do not know how this can be marketed, but this has to be marketed out, in, uh, you know, out by companies or whoever has to be. I do not know how this is gone about. But this is extreme amount of exceptional work, which I feel CSIR is doing. 
uh, I just have some points uh, as an architect. So first of all, as I said, I need to know what this pro what which products are available. Second is I would request CSIR to take a further initiative to because all the products that I have seen till now are usable by us. We need to know where it's available in the market. So maybe they could approach, uh, uh, you know, organizations like Council of Architecture, Triple ID, IIT, IAM, NID, and uh, you know, uh, introduce these products to the students and the end user, the person who is recommending the product for use. Uh, that's what I we thought all about it. Uh, but regarding how the product becomes marketed uh, in the margin, uh, in the in the to the common man. Uh, my understanding is a large waste comes from large industry. And the large industry has to somehow figure out how to dispose it in a more environment friendly manner. Uh, I thought of recommending that, uh, uh, you know, any industry uh, has a CSR fund, which was uh, previously also mentioned by one of our panelists, uh, Ms. Vaishali. Yes, she, she mentioned that they are using CSR. I would recommend that maybe if MSME could try to get some, uh, uh, you know, uh, relaxations for CSR funds for such activities, uh, wherein the large industries could uh, use this fund for uh, funding the startups, entrepreneurs from their side. Uh, you know, so it will help and also give, uh, you know, more, um, you know, appreciation to the industry, both the industry, the, uh, the new industry will also uh, get funding from the CS, uh, from the larger industry, and they will also get benefit to the government because this is all, you know, huge part of our art of labor Bharat And I think uh, this should be taken care of somehow. Uh, that's all I had to say, sir. Thank you very much. Thank, thank, thank you, Zim, sir. I think, I think Dr. Pawaskar had a comment yeah, to me. I wanted to ask uh, CSIR IQ division whether they help or extend their services to other industry or so for drafting and uh, filing the patent application. Or in the to CSIR. No, sir, we are limited to because we have very limited amount of staff and we are only 10 people here, including scientists and technical officers. And we are actually uh, the, uh, trying to get more staff and uh, the process is uh, going to take a little more time. But we are not catering to in, uh, any other right industry now. partners <laughs> right now. And we might not be able to because we do not have that mandate to do that. But if the mandate comes from uh, our... Uh... Yes, sir. Uh, actually, that mandate is available uh, to NRDC, which is... NRDC, yes, sir. Definitely, sir. NRDC so, has that mandate. Yes, sir. Has the mandate. So, NR, uh, people are welcome to approach NRDC. Yes, sir. Uh, especially designed to help MSMEs with their IP issues. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I think there are no more uh, hands on show. So let me uh, request Dr. Chatterjee to do a wrap up for us. Uh, I, I thought Dr. Ray, you would be doing it first ahead of me. I would be adding, of course, a few concluding remarks then. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Chatterjee, you're, you're from the industry. So I think in many ways, yeah. we, we will let you have the last word then. Um, what I thought was it was a very interesting discussion. I like the fact that it flowed uh, more or less in free format. Well, it was not too structured and sometimes that does not give for the richness of thought that we could get in this case. Yeah. Uh, several things have come out. Uh, one takeaway that we have from CSIR over here is that we need to be better at making our products and offerings visible. We also need to be better, as was highlighted lady from Hindalco, at helping define our value propositions, the techno-economics of our uh, technologies better. And we probably need to do much more handholding of the MSMEs, yes. not only those who have licensed our technologies, but those who are using the technologies that our licensors are making. So there are uh, good learnings in this for us, but I would also uh, encourage all the participants to please mail Dr. Ashokan uh, or uh, mail uh, the CIE theme director, Dr. Anandavalli. If there are specific problems you need solved, um, as I said, we also have an availability to finance and we have a fairly large ecosystem. So we encourage MSMEs to come visit CSI labs. Just not only the ones represented here, 
but whether it's CMERI, Durgapur, or the center in Ludhiana, or the center at Chennai, I would say wherever you are, uh, just Google map CSR, go to the nearest CSR center and just ask to look around and see what's out there. There's uh, far too much going on and we are not always able to share all of it. This uh, concept of the iConnect event of which this is a part is really to bring industry and academia and CSIR closer, but it's only a beginning. I hope that there will be a much longer journey together and to articulate possibilities in that journey, I hand it back to Dr. Chatterjee. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Ray. Actually, it has been a wonderful experience for me to be part of the uh, discussions on this iConnect platform last uh, few weeks. I have been listening to many of the uh, presentation from the CSIR labs. Though I have extensive connection with the CSIR labs, I visit them, uh, quite a few of them regularly, and I'm deeply connected. We have sponsored project. However, this was a platform when I came to know about many other areas, which probably I did not know. And having said that, one thing that we have extensively discussed in this forum today, that the connect with the industry at probably with the bigger industry is much better. However, with the smaller industry, it can probably uh, improve. It has a room to further improve upon that. And uh, as I suggested earlier also, that uh, whenever the uh, development initiative is done. It is the segment to which this product is going to, you know, uh, be applied. Those segments and the industry players in those segments probably better be identified in the very beginning and get connected with them. And then you will get a complete consumer perspective of any product that you are developing. And that's the message I got from uh, our uh, colleague here from Mr. Mohammed. So this is this is something which is a very good thing. People have come out with their opinion. People have freely expressed what exactly they expect. There is a huge amount of, uh, you know, uh, talent and invention uh, capability which uh, people have come across in this in this forum last uh, few weeks. And it's a fantastic opportunity for all of us. I can very openly say that from industry side, Wherever I have an opportunity, I am fully utilizing the, the talent which is there in the CSIL labs or in any other academic lab. I am extensively collaborating. And collaboration is the, is the, is the word today, I'm telling you. And industry loves to do things in a very speedy manner. So repeatedly, I tell and we discuss always two things. One is the speed and the accuracy. Yesterday also, I had to convey my message to IUMT Bhuvaneshwar in couple of project areas. It is the speed and accuracy which really means something for us. We have our own, uh, you know, targets in the next uh, one year, wherein I have to deliver certain project. And for that, I have partnered with uh, some of the CSIR lab and IITs uh, for that. So therefore, it is a time-bound program, which is very much meaningful for all of us. And then we identify the target, we define the specification of the product or the process or the service that we are going to, you know, develop and deliver to our business units. So that is something which is very important. So keeping that in mind, I have enjoyed thoroughly this session and it was a huge pleasure for me to be part of this panel discussion. And thank you very much, Dr. Ashokan. And thanks to the organizing committee for inviting me. Uh, Dr. Ray's uh, reflection of thoughts was fantastic food for my uh, father, this thing, interaction with him. And I will, I will definitely take this thing uh, very seriously. And wherever I get further opportunity on the fly ash, on the red mud utilization, already we are working. Further, we will explore the opportunity for a much better union with CSIR labs. Thank you very much. So that's all from my side. Thank you, sir. Dr. Ashokan, back to you for closing. Uh, so uh, let me let me thank uh, my uh, session uh, chairman, Dr. Anjan Ray, sir, and uh, uh, session co-chairman, uh, Dr. Amit uh, Chatterjee, sir, for very nicely, very uh, extensively, and a very interactive way of uh, conducting this panel discussion, sir. A uh, lot of important points have come out during the course of discussion, and uh, uh, I must thank all the panelists also for their active participation and for the for being uh, 
involved in uh, fruitful deliberation that took place during this uh, almost uh, uh, 1 hour 20 minutes or so, 1 hour 30 minutes of this panel discussion. So uh, on my personal behalf, on behalf of the organizing committee and on behalf of my director, sir, I thank uh, the session chairman, Dr. Anjan Ray, sir, and co-chairman, Dr. Amit Chatterji, sir, for very nicely conducting this panel discussion. And I also extremely convey my sincere thanks to all the panelists who could take out some of their valuable time and be with us for this important uh, discussion. So thank you uh, once, one and all, please. So now, before I invite my colleague, Dr. Sarika Verma, for uh, her vote of thanks, may I request uh, uh, my director, Dr. Avnish Kumar Srivastava, sir, for his uh, final comments. Uh, sir, are you there, sir? So, uh, we are just trying to contact uh, Director Sir. In case Sir is there, he will be joining us in a minute. In the meantime, I would request my colleague, uh, my colleague Dr. Sarika Verma, Principal Scientist, CSR Ampri. Uh, to propose vote of thanks. Thank you, sir. A very warm greetings to all of you. Namaskar, respected guests, keynote speakers, plenary speakers, directors, presenters, esteemed panelists, scientists, researchers, industrialists, students, stakeholders, entrepreneurs, and startup setters, dignitaries, ladies and gentlemen, I, Dr. Sarika Verma, principal scientist at CSIR MP Bhopal, extend my heartfelt, gratitude, heartfelt gratitude to all of you in this very, very special and unique occasion. It's a proud and privilege to propose a vote of thanks on this very special and the unique occasion of ICON Connect event on Ways to Wealth under Civil Infrastructure and Engineering theme. The event is successfully coordinated by CSIR MP Bhopal and which was basically scheduled for five days on 5th, 7th, 11th, 14th and 15th July 2022 on virtual mode. And basically all of us was here for fostering a strong Aath Nirmal Bharat through this particular theme through the utilization of the waste to the useful material by all of our interaction. Many delegates, participants from research organization, industries all across the stream, from the science to the research to the industries, and many more people attended this program. I, on behalf of CSIR MP Bhopal and my own self, extend a very hearty vote of thanks to the honorable guests, speaker, panelists, dele delegates who blessed us with their gracious presence and took out the valuable time from their very busy schedule. I would like to take this opportunity to record my heartfelt thanks to the entire cast and crew of the program for all the organizers who have directly and indirectly helped us to have this five day entire program which consists of all the different type of our flavors and the ways that we have taken that can be utilized. To Dr. Amish K. Srivastava, Director CSIR MP Bhopal has given has the guidance, support and uh, formulation for the successful functioning of this program. I have a heartfelt thank to Director Sir. Sir, your vision, direction and untiring efforts in giving new horizon to the science, to the research, to the uh, technology and basically for the utilization of this waste and how we can use it can be useful to the society through this particular program is worth appreciating and motivating thank you to you sir csir uh, csir scrc chennai director dr n anandavalli madam chairperson and theme nodal of this particular theme civil infrastructure and engineering we are highly thankful to you madam you were there with us all the time you were sharing your thoughts through the opening remark of all the event, all this day's event. We are highly thankful to you. We have uh, listened your vision, your views about how beautifully we can use the waste for different applications, different utilizations. We are thankful to Dr. Viva Malhotra Sane, scientist head, head TMB and IPU CSIR New Delhi, madam. Dr. Anjan Racer, Director CSIR IIP Dehradun and Director CSIR CBRI Rutki. Sir, we are highly thankful to you for chairing this particular today's session. Thank you so much. Very beautifully and very nicely we have listened your thoughts also. Thank you to you, sir. We are highly thankful to co-chair of the panel session, today's session, Dr. Amit Chatterjee, sir, 
and how nicely we all have seen that he has mm, properly organized this panel program which was really very nice we are highly thankful to dr s basu director csir imt bhubneshwar who has chaired this session for the first day that is on 5th july wherein we started this program with we are also thankful to dr ranjana agarwal director csir nispar and csir crri additional charge delhi for the fourth day session chairing on 14th of the july we are also thankful to dr indranil chatterjee uh, director csir nml jamshedpur for session uh, chairing the session on the second day that is on 7th july we are also highly thankful to dr ashokan papur sir chief scientist csir and the nodal of cie this particular team who has really put all his efforts to get all the people of different places of all the different mandates in this under umbrella and wherein we were able to see this five day wonderful wonderful program thank you to you sir we are highly thankful to all the plenary talk speakers whose experiences whose work has been shown by them to all of us dr mukesh kumar shri suresh shri mohan ramanandan shri ashwini k gupta we are also thankful to the keynote addresses of all these five days speakers mr sanjeev k saxena dr b chakradhar mr deepak bansal dr k k goyal shri mukesh gulati their the talks were very knowledgeable they have they have shown that how the industry is equally participating for the utilization of the waste and where in the different technologies and different views and different uh, Uh, galaxies of these people have shown uh, their what work they are doing with us thank you so much now in this panel discussion of today's program we are highly thankful to all the esteemed panelists we i was sitting here and we were listening their views these views are really really very practical and they are mark mark noting that we have to take care of all these things because ultimately we are sitting over here whatever the technologies we are making it has to go to the society through the industries by all of our interventions we are really thankful to the esteemed panelists of today's program for gracing this occasion for sharing the experiences and we are very sure this under this particular umbrella for five days work that we all have done successfully it will go ahead for all the presenters i am thankful from csir labs csir empri scrc cbri crri iimt nml or for all the pre presenters we have the heartfelt uh, felt thanks to all of you uh, we have a special thanks to dr bhanu verma madam as well because your talk was today's presentation has put a flavor to the entire uh, this program because yes ipu is a um, another one of the important part that plays a role in anybody's technology when we say this technology is from this particular place or from what particular person you have just beautifully showed the patent portfolio utilization of csir in everything and we are also thankful to the csir uh, tmd dr uh, mr devend singh we are thankful to dr rajneesh as well i would like to thank to the t entire team of csir headquarter uh, other csir laboratories all the industry partners ipu people and our team <coughs> as well from csir mp bhopal from the organizing team dr jp shukla dr mohammad akram khan dr manish mudgal dr dipti mishra dr manoj gupta we are highly thankful to all of you nevertheless i would like to thank our entire it team because without their efforts making this program for for these five days it would not have been possible the it teams from the headquarter from uh, our place as well engineer ahirwar sir and mr narendra as well and also i would like to take this opportunity to thank dg csir ministry of science and technology ministry of earth sciences government of india for their joint effort to organize this mega event so ladies and gentlemen again i am thankful to all the industry students stakeholder entrepreneurs startups partners for gracing the occasion and sharing their opinions the talk delivered the experiences shared the reflection of the observation and the experience i must mention our, our deep sense of appreciation for all of them for their work and sharing the thoughts and it's really been a wonderful job that we all have been here and we have seen this 19 technology that we have developed that to from almost tr level 8 so we are very sure that whatever we have been trying to do here for 5 days through this program actually this is not 
this is the start what i personally feel is this is the beginning that wherein what vision we have started when we formulated this program to have this technology to the society through the industry i am very sure that even i was listening also many of the industries they have shown the interest we are equally here for the same thing so i would again on my personal behalf as well as empress behalf organizers behalf i would like to invite after this program even because this is the last day but it is actually not the last day it is a start for whatever views dreams and the vision we all are having so that this is actually not a waste this is a by product as earlier all the speakers have said so i am very sure that with this vision that whatever we have done it will be given to the society through all of our efforts so on the behalf of csir and the entire supporting organization team crew and on my own behalf i extend a very hearty vote of thanks to everyone who have directly and indirectly supported us and who have been running around doing a lot of things to take on the completion of the task beyond their comfort zone thank you so much ladies and gentlemen once again i want to say that we all are grateful to all of you for the participation for everything directly indirectly we all were involved we thank you for being with us with this particular program and it has been really a very very great pleasure to listen from all of you last but not the least also i would like to thank media as well and once again i thank you for your cordial cooperation thank you very much thank you so much once again thank you namaskar thank you uh, thank you dr sarika uh, uh, for of thanks uh, i must uh, thank you uh, from the core of my heart you have taken care that uh, uh, almost uh, everyone's role and contribution uh, is well appreciated and obviously it has been a, a major task undertaken uh, under the leadership of uh, uh, director csr ampri and under the leadership of uh, csir as such where we were able to organize this event uh, with the active participation of large number of industry representatives academia and uh, other fellow uh, participants and colleagues from csir family uh, dr avnish kumar shivastha sir director ampri uh, has joined uh, may i request you sir for your final comments before we close i think uh, i mean once again thanks to all of you and uh, probably is uh, i am breaking the protocol of speaking here after the vote of thanks uh, but the thing is really from the core of my heart and uh, on behalf of csir ampri i would like to thank all the speakers distinguished persons who have joined uh, from 5th to 15 july in this program Uh, and um, from R and D side, from the industry side, and very serious uh, discussions have happened. Panel discussion went on very well. Uh, only a few comments which I feel personally uh, that um, uh, when we talk about this uh, technology, technology uses new technologies uses. Uh, I feel that uh, unless uh, it's a innovative technology. we we are not going to make any kind of dent in the society so first thing is high quality innovative technology and then definitely it has to be affordable and uh, somebody said that uh, about the thomas alva edison quote so i fully agree uh, and uh, we the value of this factor we have to increase if we want to gel between the industry as this r&d sector and the industries otherwise we put so many ifs and buts that we are not able to proceed together so that is the thing which uh, i think we have to increase the risk factor and uh, i fully agree that industries are investing a lot to adopt the new technologies and at same time the government is also investing a lot uh, in um, in the uh, developing of this new technologies there are certain programs like uh, our my fellow director uh, dr ranjan re uh, said that uh, nimitly that is a new millennium indian technology leadership initiative program where certain projects can be fitted to come out with uh, new technologies and he gave some examples also in that i want to add one more example of uh, recent raman spectrometer development 
which uh, Dr. Anjanri knows uh, very well, that uh, it has been developed under this uh, scheme. After 94 years of discovery of uh, this Raman effect from by Sir C. V. Raman, who was the first uh, Nobel laureate from Asia in the field of science in 1930. So, and uh, where government uh, CSR headquarter uh, spent the money and gave the funds to both uh, uh, AMPRI and the industry partner, of course, on different terms and conditions. Then fast track translational projects where industry can join hands from the beginning. So those kind of projects where industry can join hands from the beginning fast track commercialization and fast track translational projects. So that is uh, another opportunity where we can work together. And uh, wherever we talk about the TRL six or above, I think industry also has to take um, uh, some risk to come together with uh, R&D people and uh, then work together and uh, then uh, this techno commercial viability and marketing viability, those things definitely will come forward and to see that what is the what is the final the what is final output of the technology. But uh, I think from the both the sides, the value of this factor has to be increased. Even when we take technologies from abroad, which normally we are doing. I think the technologies developer there, they would have taken, uh, I mean, big risk factor value uh, before coming to the market. So that part we have to enhance. And uh, I think uh, after this this uh, meeting from 15 to 5th to 15th July marathon meeting, which we had with industry, I think many understandings uh, have grown up and uh, a new partnership will come up. And there was one discussion on the radiation shielding tiles and uh, Dr. Amit Chatterji gave reply also that they are in tiles. But definitely these technologies can be taken up by other industries also under certain conditions. And uh, basically our idea, a scientist when develops technology, he or she wants that technology should go up to the user. And uh, via it is it is only through industry because we are not the manufacturer, we are not the seller. So it is only the industry who can help to take the technology from the labs to the land. So we need a complete gelling and uh, work together possibly and have 100% uh, trust on each other because there was some discussion that uh, I mean, sometimes we are not able to disclose certain things. So uh, that is possible only when projects are started from the beginning, where the industry partner is there from the day one. If that is the case, definitely that is the uh, joint technology. And then industry is totally free to take that technology to the user. So this is what I want to say in, in nutshell because already it is 4.45. This Parali technology is extremely good. I wish that somebody should come forward and take this technology and go to the user. It's like a disease also. We have to give medicine to the um, common man. It's not only technology for profit making. Parali has become a disease for Haryana, Delhi, Punjab. We have to give medicine to the common man. So it's our uh, it's our joint responsibility to give to develop that medicine and give it to the society. So this uh, with this brief comment, thank you very much to all the dignitaries, all the speakers, and participants, and who have helped in organizing this event of uh, two weeks, directly or indirectly from Ampli side. Thank you very much, Namaskar. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, sir. Uh, so with that, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we come to the end of this session. And uh, thank you once again uh, for your active support and uh, cooperation to make this event uh, so successful. Thank you so much. Namaskar. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks to all of you. Thank you. Thank you, sir.